Hey guys, still here. Welcome back to Wargame Red Dragon. Today we're looking at a 10v10 tactical. Of course, it is going to be mud fight, as this is still, I think, by far the most popular map for 10v10 tacticals. You still have it all. You have the wide open stretches here where you can see the infantry or more or less HGM teams try to slug it out against heavy armor. Right flank has infantry on infantry, and Delta usually has, well, nothing. Bit of recon, maybe some units guarding this position, maybe some units guarding this town, but aside from that, not a whole lot happens. Now, today Blue is going to be, um, well, playing an interesting game. As nobody decides to go left. That is, nobody but Slim. And Slim is only going to go in with a bit of infantry and AA. And of course, on the left, you usually need a super heavy. Because if the enemy team brings out a super heavy and you don't, well, let's just say it's going to be a very lopsided fight. As that super heavy can just roll over your forces. They seem to have no shortage at all of forces going over to the right, to that forest. We got a couple of uh, Israeli transports. And I believe there is a second column all the way over here. Looks, M1A3, A1Gs, Martyr M1A2s, even a helicopter. We should have no shortage of infantry. Especially considering that there's even a couple more <laughs> UH-1H. And I believe that the units are still being deployed. Yeah, we got a quad stack of mortars coming in from Herno. Uh, Wu Tang clans going in with a Merkava 2A and the Tataka with a Merkava 3B. So they do have a super heavy. They just send it to the wrong side. Here we go. On the left, we got a, well, a scattering of French units, including an HGM unit, a Mephisto, HGM infantry, a Crotal, and Recon, and one tank. But the AMX-40 does not quite qualify as a super heavy. It has a decent rate of fire. It has decent frontal armor. For 80 points you're getting 19 AP, which is definitely not bad. But it is not very good at firing on the move. It only has a 30% stabilizer. And seeing as the engagements over here are usually firing on the move, you'd quite need a stabilizer if you want to be combat effective there. So this tank is mostly there as a defensive unit. It is absolutely not capable of pushing these planes. And I think that at this point Slim is getting quite worried, seeing that he is the only one going here. So where the hell is the rest of the team going? Well, the rest of the team is working their way through Delta and maneuvering towards Alpha. As we have um, Mysterio over here, that's one. Torvik is two. Wu-Tang Clan, three. Um, Tataka is four. We got more from Torvik. So we got at least four players going there. We also have Herno with his mortar support, so that's five players accounted for. Uh, that's six. Potentially we have two on air. There we go, right on cue. So, they might have some infantry over here. The infantry is out of position by a land mile. They're not supposed to be here. <coughs> and the Russians very much agree. And they are rather forcefully asking them to please vacate the sector. Despite the fact that they have support from two Merkava 3Bs, they cannot really stay here. Especially not the infantry. So that just leaves a couple of Huda Ren from Mysterio over on the right to hold down this position. Now, sure enough, we are getting more reinforcements, but it's going to take them a while to get there. Especially being the question, can they get there at all? Um, with the Flag Panzer M42A1, I am not quite certain. I wouldn't be surprised if this thing <laughs> might run out of fuel somewhere halfway through these woods. Anyway, so we accounted for about 8 out of 10 players. So where's the last one? Well, one of those last couple of players is Joe Armstrong. And Joe Armstrong is over here. Joe is going on a mountain track. He's taken a couple of Avengers, four, correction, eight, L no, nine LEV scouts. And there is, I believe, another unit which is slightly trailing behind. Yep, there it is. It's a Hemet. Now, these things are mountain goading their way through the woods, over the mountains, and really, really hugging the map border. Combat ineffective. 
If you see a teammate doing this, you're probably wondering what the hell is wrong with you? Why the hell are you over here? Well, all shall be revealed. For now, we're going to keep focusing on how the left flank is doing. The left flank has, correction, had the AMX-40. It also has one HGM, which is now out of ammo, and which, unfortunately, does have quite a bit of AP, but does not have the range to make that AP work. One shot from a tank, and you can kiss your expensive HGM team goodbye. And with that, they only have Hussar 85, a couple of transports, uh, one Mephisto, which only fires the whole one missile, meaning it's only 22 AP. We got one Commander's Para and another transport. And considering that the transport is in cover yet detected, since it's no longer blinking, Red 4 must have some reconnaissance unit nearby. And I think that Red is smelling blood in the water, because they're pushing in with BTR-60 PBs, BTR 60s, a Noro for support, and, well, there has to be a Super Heavy here somewhere. In Delta, the area has been cleared, uh, but that goes for both ways, it looks like. We have a Maglan over here, so we can sort of see what should be out there. And so far, it seems to be very little to nothing. Blue has managed to bring in a lot of infantry over here. Unfortunately, if they do not send something over to the left flank, all of this infantry, all of these vehicles, and all of those transports will be here for nothing. And we still have Joe Armstrong mountain goading it over to the right flank. Now, this is a bit concerning. The enemy sends forward the T-72BU. The HGMs are being rearmed, and they do hit quite hard. That was three hit points, but the tank hits harder and one shots the enemy ATGM team. With that also comes more reconnaissance infantry and even LSTR, which is going to be more than a match for any of the infantry or vehicles which are still out here. So Slim rushes in his VAB Mephisto. I'm not really sure why. I mean, yes, it's an ATGM vehicle. And yes, it can do damage if it does not decide to miss with a 90% shot, but the T-72BU is not amused and one shots it again. There goes the Hussards, the VAB is about to go down, the heal array is about to go down. And aside from one lonely Krotal, which is not really meant to take on anything along the likes of T-72BU, Blue 4 has absolutely nothing defending Charlie, and as such, defending Bravo. So if that T-72BU really wants to go on a roll, and there's a good chance that it's going to be quite aggressive, as when you have encountered so far no heavies on this side, you can get quite aggressive. And that's exactly what that T-72BU has in mind. <coughs> he has plenty of reconnaissance with him. He's a little lower on hit points, so he needs to keep his health in check and maybe resupply and rearm first before making that stretch into Charlie. But so far, this, th this flank over here is looking quite threatening. We've got a couple of supporting units over here, T-72As, a couple of Norovs, we even had some Chomaho 4s over there. And one surviving sniper. Um, how on, is that a sniper? I'm not really sure. Now, more infantry is moving into position, the Spatsnaz Gru is kicking the Maglan's ass, and with that, Charlie is wide open to attack. One Crotal, a couple of infantry units, and four mortars, and that is all. And in the meanwhile, Joe Armstrong is still making his way through the mountains. I have no idea what's out there to see here. Um, if this is some sort of guided tour. If this is the uh, the LAV stretch. Or if this is the shakedown cruise for these vehicles. I don't know. But Joe Armstrong seems to be enjoying his time in the mountains. And uh, despite all the hilly terrain. and you, Look at that, you cannot even see them. Despite the hilly terrain and despite the mountains... These things are still pretty mobile, because the LEV Scout has a 100 kilometers off-road speed. In case you're not too familiar with the vehicle, it has a little bit of armor. Emphasis a little bit, because it only has one on each side. It does have a very accurate Bushmaster auto cannon. The thing does 2 AP, that is at maximum range. The closer you get, the more it does. 1 HE, good rate of fire, and it carries 420 rounds of ammunition. And he has nine of those vehicles which use that gun. 
He also has the Avengers, but unfortunately the Avengers are now out of fuel. The LFE Scouts, not so much. They still have 400 out of their 1200, because they have an autonomy of 660. The Avenger, unfortunately, does not, and only has 500. So, the Hemet is slowly making its way through the hills, trying to get to the LFE Scouts and resupply them. But then again, that's going to take a little bit of time. Now, Blue has managed to make a push through the uh, Alpha Sector here, or what Red Fall would call Anna. And so far, it seems to be going quite well. Both of the tanks have still survived, although this one is going to be stranding any minute now as it runs out of fuel, making it extremely vulnerable to the enemy infantry here. It's Motorschutz 90, it's Speciality Jotnotki, and it's LSDR. And there goes one Merkava. The other Merkava is now stuck as it has no fuel left. If the LSDRs really want to make a play for it, they can. But they're getting shot down by the Deckungsgruppe and the Merkava itself. And seeing as there is no resupply vehicle anywhere near here, this tank is going to function as a bit of a, uh, well, I don't know, roadblock. Um, a left-behind unit. It's just sitting there. And it won't be going there, <laughs> it won't be going away from there anytime soon. Now, as we were watching uh, Joe Armstrong's Mountain Goat Forces, Blue has managed to put up some defenses. They're throwing up quite a bit of force just to see if they can stop anything. Um, why exactly we have 40 riflemen over here beats me. But we do. We also have light riflemen. Now see, these would be a little bit more effective. Because the light riflemen at least can reach out and touch targets with their super dragon. The standard riflemen... I don't know. I really don't know what her nose plans are with those units. But the f chances of the enemy actually moving across here and the infantry getting an actual shot at targets is remote. So for now, the Norov is just skirmishing a little bit with transports. The Light Rifleman tried to get a shot off, missed. And if Red Force Air is on point, they'll bomb this position and potentially this one as well, killing off all of the Light Rifleman. And the Light Riflemen have different issues as their transports are taking fire. If one of those things blow up, then pretty much all the Riflemen are going to panic. So the T-72BU is back. Black Rush is moving it forward. Herno is rushing his mortars away. And unfortunately we still have some targets wide out in the open. Like for example, an M-151A1CP. Unfortunately, that's not going to take too much longer. T-72BU is just doing target practice here. There goes the last command unit in the Charlie sector. And with that, Red briefly captured the position as they're probably still relocating their own command vehicle to a slightly safer position. So, overview. Left flank is pretty much overwhelmed. They're throwing up a reserve force of defenses, trying to see what sort of does any damage. The Anna sector has been, or Alpha sector has been secured. But they really do not have any way to push, as it's just a scattering of infantry, uh, a BGS, a Jaeger, and a Duckingsgruppe, one guy. We have one stranded tank, we have one AA infantry unit, and we have one Bardelos. Somebody is sending supply, but that's probably going to take a while. And the supply that is coming in is the Hemet from Joe Armstrong. The Hemet resupplied all of these units over here, which was very cheap, as they only used a little bit of fuel. So he only needs to make sure that these things can keep moving, and since they weren't damaged, or haven't fired a single shot, despite the match being already almost 13 minutes old, these guys do not need any supplies, and the Hemet, if it can make its way through the forests, should be able to resupply the Merkava 3B. All the while, Red is increasing their pressure on Bravo. It seems like the T-72BU that we saw previous by, I think it was Black Rush, I think it's this one, is now accompanied by another T-72BU from Walter. Really? <laughs> I just have no idea what his plans are. But then again, teammates. Now, LSDR pushing forward. The T-72BU seems to be back here for repairs, but LSDR and an HGM team are currently enough to start damaging further units back here. 
LSDR seem to be spotting, probably accompanied by another reconnaissance unit that we haven't even detected yet. And the ATGM unit is just picking off targets which are out in the open, like for example the Nana Senshiki. You could argue that that's not really a valuable target though. It's only a 5 point transport. Now at this point the LSTR slightly get too far forward. They're taking mortar fire, they're taking fire from a combat. We have a Chumat here on the defensive, but again a Chumat, while it has decent stats, 2450 meter range is just not good enough. Red just has better HGMs usually than blue. One T-72BU is dead, says Jambo Jambo. That must have been a side shot from the uh, Milan 2 over here. He's gonna try and do that again, but since these things are radar or uh, wire guided, they need to keep an eye on the target, and if they don't do that, well, so much for your missile. T-72A gets hit by this Milan 2. Not feeling so confident anymore, it tries to back off. But without sufficient cover, it will not complete that move. So we got one BU dead. Red 4 has captured the FOB, which means that they have infantry rather close. And there it is. We also, of course, have more units coming in from the other flank. This seems to be a sniper team. And it would be lovely if the defenses not just concentrated themselves on this flank, but also here. As most vehicles will come through here, but infantry might come through here and start spotting everything. And so far, I haven't seen Red 4 use much artillery yet. But that could change at any moment, as they've realized that artillery really has no shortage of targets in this sector. You look at these woods, artillery would be the far safer option to start hitting it than sending in another T-72BU. The T-72BU over here seems to be doing pretty well. It is healthy, its fuel is a little bit on the lower end of the spectrum. And so far, I think it lost most of its reconnaissance units. Because a um, probably Dorban LR fired at it, but did not receive a shell in return. Right flank is still weak. It has still, or it has been recaptured by Red 4, so Red now controls almost all of the sectors, with the exception of Charlie. Fortunately, the Merc of a 3B can move out again. Joe has resupplied it, and now it can move out. So what's Joe up to? I mean, we're only 16 minutes into this match. What the hell is he doing? Well, he has his LAV scouts and his two Avengers all spread out. They were all quad stacked, with the exception of one LAV scout. And now they're on the move. So they're gonna snake their way down this road and roll right into Echo. That is the plan, anyway. But can they... Uh-oh. Can they get away with that? There goes your rifleman. This is why you don't use riflemen, why you don't use quad stacks, and why it was generally a bad idea to bring them in. <coughs> Sorry if that came off as arrogant, but that was just a really weird move. Okay, so. <laughs> surprise, surprise. The LFE 25 scouts. Resupplied, ready for a fight, but are they in time? Or are they just too late? It's going to come down to how much resistance they encounter as they're trying to roll into Red Force main sector. If there is very little resistance, then they'll be able to do a hell of a lot of damage. Encounter one tank, and the whole game is up. Somebody on Blue 4 has noticed that he's making a move. This is GG. There goes one command vehicle. That's one down. A BMPT comes in, unfortunately. They also send in an, um, an aircraft, but it's not going for them. I think one of his vehicles took a bit of fire. Yeah, an Avenger took a little bit of fire. He's rushing an LAV-25 scout into position, at least to try and block line of sight. There goes one Avenger and one LAV, and he killed another command vehicle. Neutralizing Echo. So, so far, I'd say it's 2-0 for the Mountain Goats. The LV 25s have now captured a FOB. They don't really need it, but if you can top off your fuel, you might... Well, I'd say top off whenever you can, because you never know when it's going to be your last opportunity to do so. Lots of infantry being spawned in, and immediately dropped off from their vehicle. Uh, we still have a BMPT in pursuit. Unfortunately for the BMPT, it is not very quick. As a BMPT can do, I believe, 60-65 off-road. 
And these things can do 100 off-road and 150 on roads. So by now Echo is clear, or at least clear enough, so let's continue the hunt. And the LAV-25 scouts now take out another command vehicle. This means that Joe is suddenly, after being in the actual match for 20 minutes, but really being a combat effective force for the last three, has already scored 455 points. One LAV-25 has split off, and this LAV seems to be going... <laughs> <laughs> Seems to be welcoming another CV which was sent back to Echo. Good play, as now it's going to be increasingly hard for Redford to get a CV back here safely. We know that there is no CV in Fox. We know that there is a CV in Delta and in Alpha. And so far he has killed four. So there are still a few of them left. Now the LV-25s are not stopping. I'm not exactly sure what they're rushing into, but they're killing it for 35 points. That is 45 points. And this seems to be a... Yep, a resupply vehicle. Moving on, we encounter a Tatra, and that was the end of the Tatra. There is another artillery unit, the PHZ-70, firing napalm rounds at the main base, and it has already done that once or twice. There goes the uh, artillery unit. Next up is the Cub M4. Cub M4 goes down. Two Pram S's presenting themselves as an ideal target. Rushing in with an accuracy of 50% while moving. These things have taken a little bit of damage, but unfortunately not enough yet. But Red is sending more units to be killed off. Or at least they're trying to kill off the LAV-25s, but the LAVs are having none of it. Killing off a transport, killing off a 50-point support vehicle, and moving on to kill the next command. There goes another command unit, and Joe is now at 995 points. Again, he's been combat ineffective for 20 minutes. He's been effective for about 5 to 6 minutes at this point, and he has scored 995 points. He's just rolling through and rampaging through the whole soft underbelly of Red 4 as all their actual combat units have moved up. They were on the offensive in Charlie. And without support, it's going to be far easier for Blue to hold on to their main spawn. Now sure enough, he is losing at 25s But he has lost many, many fewer points than he has actually killed. Because he's killed 1060, 1100. I can barely keep up with this. There's 1105. This Cub could make a nice target. Um, the LEVs still have a little bit of fuel left, so they should be able to do at least another 150 kilometers. There goes a book for 85 points. Another AA unit, really not too much of a match. It decides to blow up a resupply unit, and there goes the AA unit. So of his initial 9 LEV scouts and 2 Avengers, jeez, that thing is still with him. He's lost 7 of his LEVs and 2 of his Avengers. Meaning that he lost almost all of his forces. But single-handedly, he just turned this game around. As Blue is heavily on the defensive. And now they are very much back in the game. They almost have 4,000 points versus 3330 for Red. I just hope that... No. I was hoping that the 1125 could make it back to the home base. Where it could get resupplied. This was epic. <laughs> Just rushing 25 or LAV 25s over the hills. Well, rushing. It took him 20 minutes to get there. So he took this route over here, uh, up here, through here, through these hills, there, there. Um, I think he resupplied somewhere around here and then rushed through here. So if you have a teammate who's doing that um, sometime later today or maybe tomorrow after watching this video, now you know why he's suddenly throwing LEV-25s at this position. As I was covering the LEV-25s, Blue's defense has so far crippled, if not killed, almost all of the units which were actually engaging them. There goes the uh, dastardly BMPT which was able to kill off quite a few of the LEV-25s. But I'm seeing no further signs of heavy resistance in Charlie. I'm seeing no super heavies. It seems to be that most of the units are currently no longer an actual threat. Sure, they're still here. Now, LSTR is still dotted everywhere. Special Forces AA infantry. But 
it's no unit which can single-handedly push on Bravo. And that is good news. They're even pushing back now with, believe it or not, M113's A3s. And so far he has been able to kill something. That's about to end as, <laughs> as Black Rush counters it hard with a BMPT. Auto cannons and grenade launchers, that is not what these things stand up to very well. Red Force still has a little bit of air power left. And so far they're going for nothing as it was ordered evac. Okay. Make 27 takes out his transport. Yeah, that is absolutely the priority target over here. A five point transport for a vehicle that costs you 115 points and has the capability of taking out super heavies with one or two shots. Now, you can see that the fight has been taken out of both sides. It's like they are both completely devoid of units which can go on the offensive. So the units which do go on the offensive are Tyrant 5 Blazers, Rangers, Kutai 90, Commando Marines, but they really have very, very little tank support. And so far it seems that Red has realized that they are now the underdog and they have started to quit. A couple of T-55 AIM-2 Dinos could be a little bit more of a problem though. That is, until these Kutai 90s actually fire their Call Gustav, but if they do so, they immediately die to the BMPT. These things have 13 AP, 8 frontal armor. These have 13 frontal armor, 15 AP, so they can almost one-shot the Turan 5. And the Turan 5 will do damage, but not enough. It cannot even penetrate the BMPT at max range. So it's going to have to wait for this thing to get a little closer before it's able to kill it off. Aside from that, they have a little bit of an infantry problem on their hands here. And the T-55s, what are you working on? I'm not even sure what those missiles were. Are they firing fireworks today? That was a miss, that was a miss, that was a miss. You guys are terribly accurate. 50%, but no stabilizer. Turan 5 Blazer does get hit. I think by a direct impact from a T-55. It completely misses the mark. And just dunks the shot. What do we have here? I think I missed something good there. Mi-25, S-24. They need to counter this thing quick. There's a Vulcan there and a Barkan. Come on. There you go. Elo down. <clears throat> still, Red 4 has, still has a bit of... Well, offensive units which are coming in. It's not just supportive units that have survived. We got even X-185 uh, KTs coming in. And those have the Bushmaster too, which is even more deadly than the Bushmaster that was mounted on the LAVs. Unfortunately for them, the Dorban LRs take no prisoners. And Tataka is already working these things over. Two shots, two kills... <laughs> And that's what a spike MR or LR will do for you. Next volunteers are going to be the T-55s. These things can take a little bit more of a hit than the XA-185s, but <clears throat> not too much. And there goes one. The Chumats try to repeat that performance, but completely fuck it up. Again, they probably don't have the range, and these things might have run out of the operational range of that missile.
Would be nice if I could turn my mic back on. Game turned into a bit of a Pyrrhic victory as Blue 4 lost all their command vehicles. Uh, Joe definitely did his share. 16-10 in kills, 6-30 in losses, 4-56 in command points. Let's just go over his highlights again. Uh, a couple of helos. These were early on. I didn't actually feature it in the video, but these things were attacking. Avengers, LV-25 scouts took out a couple of, well, supporting units early on. There goes one CV, two, three, four, five. That's five CVs killed. The Block 52 then proceeded to kill three aircraft. Pretty high priced as well. Um, MI-8KT, again killed off by an LEV-25 of all things. But so far most of its points came from CVs, a couple of supporting units like the Cub 4 and the PHZ. I'm certain the infantry very much appreciated the fact that the PHZ-70 was no longer a factor. And that push almost single-handedly won them the game. Almost. But at the last couple of minutes, Red came back, killed off all of the command vehicles, and just wiped out Blue 4 entirely. So despite the fact that they only got 95 points more in losses than they got in kills, Red won the game. Now, I'm interested in one thing. Yeah, this is entirely unsurprising. This is the guy who brought in the uh, rifleman and the light rifleman. I'm really not sure why the light rifleman or where the rifleman were where they were and what his plans were with them. Um, riflemen themselves are really not the right unit to bring in. And I'd say bring in anything other than riflemen if you have the chance. And if you do have the chance to bring them in, or if you absolutely have to, then find a good position for them to go and not some sort of in designated forest in the edge of the map. Anyway, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed that LV-25 rush. Um, I could barely believe what I was seeing when I first watched the replay. And I really, really enjoyed that. So, I hope you did too. If you have something similar that you want to show me, then by all means send it in through the link down below in the description. If you want to find more people to play with, then you can do that through the Discord. I have quite a few people on there and usually a couple of players online. So if you're tired of playing 1v1 or player playing on your own, then by all means find your teammates there. Have any questions? Let me know down in the comments. And um, aside from that, I hope to see you soon for more videos.